And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. We are here. Uh, it is officially autumn of, um, at least I think it is, autumn of 2015. The door is open after a long period of absence. All Natural is back, baby. Baby back. Ribs. Oh, don't get me hungry now, man. Don't get me hungry. Just ate a banana. No, but baby back ribs, man. You mean low and slow, smoked for 10, 14 hours? I guarantee. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, it happens to be Saturday <laughs> afternoon. It is, uh, what do you think? Almost the end of September? 2015? Well, of course, it ends this week. It ends on Wednesday! Ah, it does. Wednesday! Wed is it Wednesday or Wednesday? Weddings Day. Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Formalities. Welcome everyone to Progressive Discussions. Progressive Discussions is what you're watching. <laughs> I think I said that. I'm your host, James uh, P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Uh, some of the. For some of the um, <laughs> the things I used to say in the past, like our location and where we're broadcasting from, I don't have to say them anymore because they are in the intro now. So you could read it, so I don't have to say it. Anyway, we're here and I would like to introduce my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Yep. He's here. He is here. I would like to say greetings to my near dear friend uh, uh, in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. I'm not going to say greetings to anybody else Ooh. because every uh, lately all of my... Uh, Fine feathered friends and have friends? administrators is, or acquaintances and everything collectively, mm -hmm. they don't acknowledge the fact that I send, I was sending them greetings every week. Well, because they're not watching the stinking because, show. Because they're not watching a stinking show, and that they don't read the stinking newsletter. And that goes for the members of our political group. They don't watch the stinking show. You know where I get more? I get more feedback, a lot more feedback, and response, mm -hmm. not from the group, but from our Facebook page called Progressive Discussions. That's where people yeah. acknowledge us. I the see a bunch of bubbles all the time the when I'm up there. fucking group, they make their comments, they make their posts, but when I post the show on the group, nobody says nothing. They don't even click like. Hey, I got an itch right in the middle of my forehead, members. You know what this means, don't you? Yeah, I'm up there all the time and I see uh, a bubble. Uh, so and so likes your at progressive discussions. Uh, so and so likes your uh, uh, comment at uh, hard hitting. No, it it, truth. it shows you how many numbers of yeah. people actually viewed what you yeah, posted. Yeah, too. But I'm, these, these bubbles come up. The bubbles come up. Yeah. Tiny bubbles like you, in the wine. With Don Ho, right? If I put some a comment up there and then. James Madonna is going to, oh, he likes the comment that's such and such, you know, I, the bubbles come Well, um, yeah. Well, a lot of people do that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, YouTube and uh, the Facebook page and Twitter, by the way, get a lot of response. The fucking group, and if I put it on my profile, nothing. Never put anything on your profile fuck, except you know oh, fuck personal yourself. shit that you need there. Oh, you know, you know what? Uh, uh, um, most, I would say, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people nine 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 on my friends list, um, they are uh, 
they only um, they either talk about the same thing every day and every night. No. Really boring. Not well-rounded people. Or they talk small talk. Small talk. You know, like, <gasps> real boring shit. I like a deep, intellectual, well-rounded person. Not rounded like Chris Christie. Hold on. Oh boy. Those are the levity bells. Oh boy. No, not rounded like that, but... That's any, roly poly, man. You know, there's a there's Baby an Huey. there's an isopod that lives in the ground called the roly poly, because they they roll into a ball when they're threatened. But anyway, oh, that's the that it looks like a porcupine or something. They call them pill bugs. No, they're they're oh, it's something smaller. No, they're they're an isopod. It's a, a crustacean. It's a, a pill oh, bug. That's that sounds like Chris Christie, a, a subterranean crustacean. The mole men. The mole men. Superman and the mole men. That's where Republicans belong. They belong underground. <laughs> deep. Way down deep. Yeah, six feet down. No, more <laughs> than that. Everything we discuss politically is part of our uh, series called Capitalism in a Conch Shell. And there's the conch. Capitalism in a Conch Shell, where I get words of wisdom from. All right. I'm sorry if we're being... Uh, humorous and not hard hitting we don't want we don't want people to criticize us for i do i love criticism for being always remember for, for not being hard hitting you get more truth from your enemies than your friends so be thankful for your enemies what if what if they say stupid things well, like that's another um, matter trying to find value in being a republican well, that's another and, matter. And isn't putting it? down uh, somebody who really has compassion and empathy and who cares like a like a good progressive, you know, like uh, a bleeding heart liberal. Yeah, because you care. You're yeah, you're a bleeding. Yes, heart. Yes, you're a yeah. bleeding heart liberal. Anyway, everything you've heard, you jabronis, about trickle down economics from re uh, conservative propaganda lies. It's all a lie. It's a fantasy. It never was. It never will be. Uh, it'll, it might tr it might trickle down in the Cayman Islands, uh, you know, or, <laughs> into the banks yeah. or Swiss bank accounts or say, offshore, yeah, uh, uh, um, mailbox. It might, but it's not gonna. It doesn't trickle down in the U.S. That's right. It siphons up to the fat cats, the one percent. That's the siphon. All right, we're done with the siphon. We're done with the conch. Now to my little spiel that I do, monologue, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we'll start off with a little Chisler's Hall of Shame. And uh, I want to do some American retail industry bashing as well they deserve, rightfully so. Uh, all right, here we go. Here are some of the uh, the little scams, the little legal scams that retail polls. I'm sure there are more, especially when they think of new ones. It, they, there definitely will be more. Um, a high flat rate shipping and handling which is much higher than the uh, United States Postal Service charges. Mm. Scam number one. Scam number two. How many days does that take? About the same amount of time that FedEx, UPS See? or the post office. Yeah, there's no, it doesn't well, come wait, quicker. Who's charging that? The company FedEx, selling. FedEx, UPS or what? No, what? this is the, the company selling the product. Oh. Oh, forget about that crap. Yeah, well, that's why it's I wouldn't pay that's why it's sure. crap. Huh. All right, yeah. if you're if something's wrong with your product and you send it back, there is a restocking fee. Yeah. That does that poor guy who stocks the shelf get paid that fee? Hey, the the, the pizza delivery man doesn't uh -huh. get one penny of a delivery charge at pizzerias. Slap on the consumer. He doesn't get one penny. He told me he has to pay for his own gas. By the way, to deliver the pizzas. 
That's like the uh, restaurant industry giving uh, waiters and waitresses, what is it, $2.15 an hour? Yeah. Because they know they and then, then they get tips and chiseling on their tips and and go-go dancers Ooh. exotic dancers they don't get paid per set anymore they have to pay the owner to work there and they have to tip the DJ to play their music because why because they get gratuities so the owner the business owner is using this against them which are the employees now do you see how how chiseling businesses in the United States. All right, let me con let me continue. Retail bashing. Retail industry uh, jacking up their. I'm sorry. <clears throat> excuse me. Jacking up their version of the retail price during sales right. periods. So you you don't thirty really, percent off. So you don't really get this the thirty percent off. Yeah, off what? Off what? Off a higher price. So is it 30%? May, maybe it's 10%. Maybe it's nothing. Oh, here, here's an infuriating uh, a fact that happened to me personally uh -oh. when I received it uh, uh, during a, as a Christmas gift. Retail stores. Gift cards with uh, an expiration uh, date. Geez. Expiration date. How can a gift expire? If, you're, if your um, sister-in-law or brother... Buy, uh, uh, gives you a uh, pays for a gift card and gives it to you. It's supposed to be worth that monetary value, no matter what. Now, when it expires, guess what? The retail company steals. Mm -hmm. Yes, it steals the the value that the gift card was paid for. Scam. <clears throat> Another legal scam. Um. Well, first of all, I could not be any prouder uh, uh, of uh, Pope Francis. In all of his speeches, he did not hold back anything, and uh, uh, he did not care who likes him, who who, who gets angry, who, who he offends. I think he intended on saying what he said to you-know-who. To the forces of evil, the greedy, greedy, corrupt corporatists, the capitalist system of the United States. So, salute, God, bl God bless you, Pope Francis, the first pope I ever liked, the first truly progressive pope that in existence, I think. Uh, uh, the Polish pope, he just did a lot of smiling. He wasn't a rabble rouser, you know, like this this guy. This guy's a tough cookie. And he's funny too. I I, I posted the, the video of him telling jokes in the, ah. the Vatican. They're cute. They're mother-in-law jokes. Ah. You gotta watch it. He's he, he's a funny guy though. He's, Take my mother-in-law. And please. he's very he's very funny. He's very smart. He has a master's degree in chemistry. Yeah. Tell uh, tell Santorum that. Santorum says and. Um, and uh, Why don't you other, listen to the scientists? Oh yeah, other Republicans. I am a scientist. I got a master's in chemistry. You boob. Yeah, the other, there are, all the Republicans feel he should stay out of, uh, out of climate change yeah. because he uh, leave it to the scientists. But guess what? Republicans don't listen to scientists either. <laughs> they don't listen to the EPA. So they're they're so concerned with science when Pope Francis talks about climate change. Now they care about science. Yeah. Otherwise. The EPA? Nah. Don't listen to scientists. Alright. Well, the New York City retail scumbags were selling commemorative Pope Francis souvenir rosary beads for like $175. You are officially in the Chiseless Hall of Shame. Give me a break. Shame on you. American capitalism strikes again in every which way possible. I wonder how much they wanted for the bobblehead. Oh, there's a Francis bobblehead? Yeah. I wonder where the rosary beads are made. You think maybe in a third world country? Possibly. Most Talk likely. about sleaze, man. I'm telling you, American business is the sleaziest uh, uh, scheme every anyone ever came up with. Na 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 na. 
na 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 hey 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 bye bye boner <laughs> the cry baby weeper of the house bye bye boner but you know something John Boehner he might uh, being that he was actually fired for not being uh, uh, conservative and right wing enough maybe he'll, he'll, he'll be so pissed that he'll start exposing things about his party. He'll protect his he, he'll protect his ability to get a better job. So he will not be doing things. You like mean that. in the private sector? That's correct. In other words, they don't like Mr. Eric Cantor when he was canned. Yeah, when Cantor went right was over to the bank, baby. When Cantor was canned, is this why Barack Obama is holding back? That's why they all hold back. Because Barack Obama is holding back. If if he they wanted, all, if know. he wanted to, because of all the racism he had to put up with, he could rat every one of those motherfuckers out. That ain't gonna happen. But he's not doing it. For, for what? For because of Scalotta? Because of the system. The big mammal. So what? What system? system? And when you're when somebody attacks you for eight years, relentlessly, you get even, my friend. That's James. Madonna thinking. They corporatists do not do that. That would cut off their nose to spite their face. So Barack Obama is thinking of um, his kids' future and his his retirement, how comfortable his retirement's going to be. That's correct. So in other words... That's what they all do. He's... Uh, see, this is the problem. See, there are so many people out there that are so pro Democrat that they forget it's not the Democratic Party of FDR and JFK anymore, and and uh, of course there are the feminists <laughs> that only care about putting a woman in a White House. Well, that's all they care about. Uh, I would be I would be happy to see Vice President Elizabeth Warren. I think she's a pretty cool cool cat, man. I think I think she she's. She's much better and more honest than Hillary. And is, uh, did you ever see that video of when uh, Hillary wanted to meet with her and learn about bankruptcy law? Because she taught in uh, Harvard. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is a college professor. And after she gave her all to it, talk ba bankruptcy. Hillary didn't do it in the first place. No, she flip-flopped. She flip-flopped. She, she went wherever the money trail was, right? There you go. The big mamu. The big mamu. All right, and the last but not least, Kim Davis's ah! new, Kim Davis's new crying video, the big four-headed, redneck, red state evangelical Im inbred bigamist, uh, 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 fornicator, fornicating real. She's actually a follower of Satan because <gasps> she's not a follower of the God of the Bible. But she's crying. She's she's crying on her new video. <laughs> God don't love me. What is wrong, God? It hurts don't when listen to say me. That God doesn't love me. <laughs> God don't love me no more. Where's the evangelical ah! serpent? In honor of Kim Davis, we haven't heard much about that. That other insane lunatic, uh, Mike Huckabee, but which is good. It, taking up serpents in honor of all the right wing, counterfeit Christian evangelicals and the born again idiots. I'm taking up serpents, taking up serpents. Mike Huckstabee. Huckstabee. All right. Being that we're talking about Kim Davis and Huckstabee and counterfeit Christians, let me wear. The evangelical serpent. Because oh. this is pretty much what they're worshiping. Because they don't. Hey, man, don't get so close to my neck, my throat, man. They're, they don't. They don't know anything about the God of the Bible. That's for the God of the Bible. So, she's crying. They don't love me. God don't love me. Let me tell you something. When when do you think God has cut himself off from the general population of the earth? 
What about what period do you think? When he kicked them out of the Garden of Eden. That long ago? That's correct. Really? That's so correct. all these people. So when Tim Tebow used to pray in the middle of the football field that he his team would win, nobody was, was praying. Nobody was listening to him. No. But was that what he was praying? I have no idea what he was praying for. Oh, well, but he's he a, was, he's, he's an event. He's like he's one of those. Because if he was praying for that, he was a he's a self-centered bastard. God wouldn't even hear that kind of prayer. Oh, if I was God, I'd says you have some nerve. Yeah. Asking me to make your team win when there's all these other teams. And first of all, why why do you think God would care about professional sports? Because he doesn't. Or he doesn't even care about political parties. He's got the universe to tend to. Well, first of all, you know? he he's not going to care about a free enterprise system business that's no, there to make a he's profit. He's got his own economics. It, and it's not about Jeez. it's not about hoarding money either, making and hoarding money. The world tomorrow is not about what people know of today. No. You know. No. Well. The lion will eat straw like the ox. The, well, what about his uh, teeth, his canines? I don't know about his teeth, but he will not be a predator. Right. Well, like in the Garden of Eden, they weren't. Correct. They weren't predators. Correct. Now, um. The uh, the only time money is actually useful and important is when you don't have any. Where, no, no, I'm talking about like uh, necessities that make that are supposed to make you content with contentment. Enough food, a roof over your head, you know, shelter, clothing, clothing, uh, maintaining good health, eating, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, like a, a secure place to live that you can call. Home, you know, and anything beyond that, a wanting to buy a BMW or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Mercedes or a Cadillac or a Fiat like the Pope. He well, has that, a small Fiat. Yeah, but that well, these are humble cars. The, oh. the, these are cars. No, no, no. A Fiat has a good price tag on it. I thought it. I thought it was always a cheap car. No, no, it ain't no Hugo. Yeah. Hey, is it true that uh, uh, China is building the uh, the uh, the new uh, high-speed uh, yes, uh, train in the United States? Yes, so American is. workers uh, don't have the capability. Out of the job. They don't have the, the job. They don't have the capability of building yeah. high, a high-speed rail oh, system. No, no high-speed rail system. No. no. So they got to outsource that. Americans have to go to school. For many, many years, to acquire the skills to be able to stock shelves in Walmart. Okay. I mean, the whole world. Well, not well, not the not the third world or the fifth world or the fourth world, but most of the civilized world already has the high-speed rail system mm -hmm. with the modern trains. Mm -hmm. You know, and they and I believe they. Um, they hover a little bit off the track by uh, magnetic uh, one. by using electromagnetic magnetic. energy. They hover like a monorail, like the uh, futuristic monorail. The United States, they still have the dinosaur. I don't think any. Do people still take Amtrak? Yes, they do. <laughs> That's socialism too, you know. What? Because the government gives money to Amtrak. But it wasn't socialism in the beginning, with the railroads, when the government gave them land and everything else. But that wasn't socialism. That was capitalism. Well, Nikolai Tesla... How do you think the railroads Nik got their land? Freebies! The uh, Nikola Tesla would be called a socialist too by Republicans, yes, but, they uh, would. but yes, he they had would. a more efficient system than Thomas Edison. And a free one. And yeah, and free. And, and that's free. why you and that's why that the post yesterday says that's why Edison was in your history books, but not Nikola. And guess where the money came to pay for those lies in your school history books? 
taxpayers' money. Well, yeah. You know, uh, um, um, uh, I like that banner particularly of all the wasted, all the weapons that were wasted military spending, the planes, that, that if you took the cost of all that military waste, you would you could eradicate poverty in the United States. Could have been done many several times yeah. in America. Um, uh, well, when 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 politicians bitch and moan about saving tax dollars and cutting spending, they should really start with their own salaries. And 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 That's not much. if you're making even if you're if you're if you're a uh, blood sucking parasite making the hundred and seventy five thousand a year, hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a year can easily pay for your own health insurance. I mean, I know somebody that has a moderate health insurance policy. You know, a business owner, uh -huh. uh, family owned business, pays five hundred a month, <clears throat> a moderately okay good health insurance now if you're making 175,000 you got Cadillac insurance you could you could pay for your own health insurance and your own retirement but, but we shouldn't have to but they're, they're this because they're not public servants they're blood suckers there's 10 other nations in this world who don't pay for their medical it's free Oh yeah, Scandinavian countries, yeah, the uh, Denmark, Norway, the, and Sweden, the they can do it, the, but the richest country in the world can't do it. Yeah, and then you have Stephen Colbert making fun of Scandinavia, saying, oh, we're going to, does this mean we're all going to be eating pickled fish? You know what? I like pickled fish, Stephen Colbert. I like pickled herring and cream herring. You know what? Don't make fun of a system that is ideal, the hybrid system of a... Uh, um, um, democratic socialism. socialism. The hybrid of the best of the best. Remember where socialism came that from. Works. It came from people dreaming of utopia. Yeah, you told me that Wednesday. That's true. Utopia. Okay? Okay, now you heard that? Utopia. Utopia. That's a nice word, you know. The hippies, it's not a bad system, the, utopia. The hippies used to talk about a utopia, right? Back in the Yeah, 60s. but who the hell was going to bring it about? They weren't because they were busy, busy smoking marijuana and sitting in the LSD, corner. LSD? Tripping Taking on the LSD. LSD man, yeah. well, that's where they saw the utopia, when they were doing the drugs. <laughs> yeah, but somebody else is doing the work then. What was Grace Slick talking about when she sang uh, Chasing Rabbits? What was that about? Alice in Wonderland. Oh. Down a rabbit hole. You never read Alice in Wonderland? No, but that, it had to be there had to be a deep message in there when Grace Lake said. Well, that. when she said the little pills, the little pink pills, of course. Well, you know what she was talking about. Well, because she was she was um, yeah. she wanted to please all the people at Woodstock at that time. <laughs> but uh, you know, Alice in Wonderland was kind of surrealistic. Yeah. See, that's what bothered me. Lop off their heads! Lop off their heads! That's what bothered me about the um, Occupy Wall Street movement, is that a lot of college kids were camping out there with tents and just a just a just an excuse to hang out and camp out and have fun. They they didn't have any. They weren't. They didn't realize the seriousness of the Occupy movement. Well, it was very serious because all the cops have all the documents on them now. I don't and they care. can shut them up. Like you, uh, you, you'll read in the new newsletter about Edwin Meese when Reagan was in office, how he uh, did things in California with Reagan and stuff. They used to take pictures of the demonstrators, take pictures of their license plates, and they used to neutralize them. How do you, how do you, that, how how do you neutralize people that hate your guts and are pissed off? You start serving warrants on them, or you start saying, you know, you get out there, you're going to be in jail. Now, um, the Pope... You camp them down. Now, the only person uh, in Congress, technically, that the Pope Francis shook hands with was uh, a, a, a John um, um, Carey, right? John Carey? Is that his name? Secretary of State. Yeah, John, yeah. John Carey. John Carey... Carey. Carey is not worth 
the Pope shaking hands with because John Kerry wanted to arrest Edward Snowden, the hero that did his job. <laughs> yeah. Oh, real uh, progressive Democrat there, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, it is time for us to sink our <laughs> teeth into these readings, and I will put away, because he's making my neck hot, the evangelical serpent, Ooh. the wicked serpent, taking up serpents. I'll just put them away. Away with you. Away with you. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Excuse me. Oh man, must be ragweed in the air, huh? Ah, uh, yes, it is ragweed season. Marquette University. Yeah. In Milwaukee. And Fordham University in New York. Fordham. 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 Announced Thursday. They are rescinding honorary degrees awarded to. Cosby. Oh, that guy? He doesn't deserve an honorary degree. We deserve honorary degrees, not him. Before allegations arose that he was a serial rapist yeah, who you, drugged oh, his victims. I thought that meant he used to put his dick inside of a, a, a box of Cocoa Puffs. Cereal Speaking rapist. of that, Speaking like a serial that. killer, right? Sledgehammer. To a box of, of Fruit Loops. Right. Speaking of that, did you see that love doll last night? Yeah, I did. I I, I made a comment that its vagina was uh, a little large when he, they spread the legs. Though. When it opened up. Yeah, they need to make it smaller. Yeah, the Japan, the Asians make a very uh, soft, real feel sort of lifelike love doll uh -huh. which has a high price tag and I think really? eventually the sex companion uh, uh, concubine the androids will have that real look to them I'm sure they will I'm sure and then you could program it to say oh you're so wonderful you're the most handsome person in the universe oh darling oh you know just all the hallmark bullshit just program it into the into the female androids uh, a memory bank <coughs> to give you constant praise. It's the first time the two Jesuit schools have taken back an honorary degree. Cosby was honored at Marquette in 2013 and at Fordham in 2001. Fordham is in the Bronx, isn't it? It's in New York, yeah, somewhere. It's in New York. Uh, why, are they kissing up to him because he's black? Uh, that's the original When they reason. gave him to him, I guess. Yeah, because he's a black man who, who's successful in America, who's, who's, who's rich. That was before all this... Uh, before the sordid sword, allegations. Right. Well, I mean, a lot of people were not happy that he bought out the little rascals and took it off the air. You know. From dozens of women began publicly piling up against him. A lot of women. Cosby admitted in a court deposition to getting prescription quaaludes to give women. Mickeys. He wanted to have sex with. So he got a rich guy like him had to give them a Mickey. According to documents from a civil lawsuit obtained in July by several news organizations. So, so he, Bill Cosby, offered these women his fat Albert. Well, he said. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. He said that he understood women who were a little to real, a little reluctant to indulge. And he could read them very well. Can't a rich guy like so, that find enough gold diggers that would jump in bed with him? He had to drug them? He had to have a, 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 a woman that was not responding. Like you, a necrophilia. Like, like a corpse. Like a corpse. Like one of those love dolls from Japan. Just lie there. You know? Well. 
like you said, the, the problem with the masturbation tools for men is a man has to have a full erection in order, in order to partake in them. Where a woman doesn't matter with, with the woman's toys. You know, it doesn't matter if she's aroused because she'll get aroused uh, quickly. Arousal, remember Ruth Westheimer? Arousal. Donald yeah, Trump. He's the squinter eyes. Arousal. Yeah, arousal. Yeah. I'm sorry. Donald right? Trump. Donald Trump, what can you say? What can you say about him? He's, he's one of a kind. He's boycotting Fox News Channel. But the two sides may be moving toward a truth. A Fox News Channel representative said Thursday that Fox News CEO Roger Ailes would soon meet with the candidate and discuss his issues. What's his middle name, Ginger? With the channel's Ginger coverage Ailes. of his campaign. Oh. Ailes and Trump spoke this morning and plan to have a meeting next week to discuss their differences of opinion regarding Fox's coverage of Mr. Trump's presidential campaign. The front runner for the Republican presidential nomination tweeted his intention to boycott Fox programs on Wednesday after a scheduled Thursday appearance on its top rated show, The O'Reilly Factor. Oh, God. The O'Reilly Factor. Was canceled. Oh, it by was? By the cable network. Oh, it was? No, his appearance. Oh, his appearance was canceled. Thank you. Later in the day, the real estate mogul was upset again when National Review editor Rich Lowry used a crude term to say Trump had been castrated by GOP rival Carly Fiorina. I don't think so, Fiorina. Fiorina's in no position to criticize any opponent. Tweeting, Fox News owes me an apology for allowing clueless pundit Rich Lowry to use such foul language on TV, unheard of. Foul? Well, Trump uses foul language all the time. I mean, you know. Before Ailes agreed to meet with Trump, the network issued a statement saying Trump did not understand the media's role in covering the campaign. Adding, he doesn't seem to grasp that candidates telling journalists what to ask is not how media works in this country. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Carly Fiorina castrating Donald Trump? Ouch! No way. Carly Fiorina. Well, she is a castrator. I mean, is she a, does look. Is a joke. Look. Horse face Fiorina has got so much dirt under her carpet. She's, yeah. in, she's in no position to debate with Donald Trump. She needs a Dyson. Donald Trump. Yes, a Dyson um, um, vacuum cleaner. Donald Trump will destroy her in <coughs> any debate. <coughs> Capitalism in a conch show, brother. Warning. Warning. That the Republican presidential race has become too nasty. Good. Good. <clears throat> Their pain is my pleasure. Scott Walker exited the 2016 campaign on Monday. Did, did, did the crazies uh, exit yet? Like uh, Santorum and Huckabee? Those son of a bitches. They, you know, leave it up to zealot religious nuts to hang in there and not quit. Leave it up to them. And he urged others to quit too. And clear the field. So someone can emerge to take down front-runner Donald Trump. Sure. What about horse-faced Fiorina? Is she in it? Yeah. She's uh, right behind Trumpy. Right now. Well, her credentials suck. 
she's right behind Trumpy. The announcement marked a dramatic fall for Walker, who was struggling to generate money and enthusiasm after surging into the race's top tier early in the year. He will return to his job as governor of Wisconsin, where his term runs through 2018. Lovely. They did the same thing in Wisconsin that the idiots did here in New Jersey. They re-elected a scumbag. You know, and, uh, um, uh, well, you know, people, Republicans and teabaggers, come to think of it, they probably would like uh, what Carly Fiorina did when she was uh, running Hewlett Packard. <coughs> you know, as far as the outsourcing and, uh, you know, the almighty dollar, the and selling scanners and etc. to Iran. Yeah, uh, everything. While sanctions were in effect. Yeah, profit first. That's uh, right. Republicans love that. Profit first. Profits over people. Over people, over morality, over yeah. uh, their fake, and I repeat, fake family values, like Bernie Sanders has said many times. Their family values are fake. Today, I believe that I am being called to lead by helping clear the field in this race so that a positive, conservative message can rise to the top. Yeah. Walker said, I encourage other Republican presidential candidates to consider doing the same so the voters can focus on a limited number of candidates who can offer a positive conservative alternative yeah. to the current front runner. Mm -hmm. One of the last Republicans to enter the race, Walker, 47, joined former Texas Governor Rick Perry as one of the first to leave. Scott Walker is 47 years old. That's correct. You don't look it. He looks young. He found himself unable to adjust to Trump's popularity or break out in either of the first two GOP debates. Both candidates warned of the billionaire businessman's influence on the GOP as they stepped aside. I have no use for any of them. Trump tweeted in response to Walker's decision. Oh, Trump got booed in South Carolina. He got booed when in he insulted. Um, uh, uh, Rubio. Well, he got booed in New York when uh, people were waiting for Pope Francis and Donald Trump showed up uh, by his his main office, I guess. They booed, they booed him. You know? He's going to get a lot of boos. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know exactly how big his following is right now, Trumpy. About 30% of the uh, Republicans. Oh. It's the base. It's the base, man. Well, the uh, the hate. Uh, tea bagger. The, the tea hate. The, uh, the redneck uh, tea bagger hate groups love Donald Trump because, you know, he riles them up. They, they, they love to scapegoat and blame uh, immigrants of color for their problems. Trump tweeted in response to Walker's decision, he's a very nice person and has a great future. Yeah. Walker was thought to be a leader in the big pack for much of the year and built a massive national organization with paid staff spread across the country. He tried to appeal to religious conservatives, Tea Party conservatives, and the more traditional GOP base. Douchebags. <laughs> Casting himself as an unintimidated conservative fighter. Fighter? Crook. Oh, he fought the unions in Wisconsin. That's because the He un fought those people out there. That's because uh, the unions didn't. Uh, protesting. The unions were not aggressive and militant enough. He said he could fight ISIS because he fought them. He knew how to do it. Oh, he's got secrets. 
Oh yeah. Oh. yeah. He's got secrets. Uh, it's pretty hard to fight people that are dressed like civilians, isn't it? They could be anywhere, right? You yeah. in the Middle East. Casting himself as an unintimidated conservative fighter who had a record of victories in a state that has not voted Republican for president since 1984. Hmm. Many of Walker's troubles were not of Trump's making. He took days to clarify whether he supported ending birthright citizenship. He initially showed interest in building a wall between the U.S. and Canada, only to laugh it off as ridiculous. He also declared he wasn't a career politician, despite having held public office for 22 straight years. Wow. Wow. It's like monarchies, right? Socialist. Socialist. Government paycheck. Government paycheck on a dole. Well, when it applies to them, they like it. Oh, yeah. All, the, all them are freebies? Oh, yeah. Perks? Freebies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they can collect all, the, all them freebies uh, uh, after just one term, right? Oh, yeah. One full term in office? I don't know, they probably, can, they probably can collect them after one month in office. Well, being that, they, being that they vote, they, they all vote on their own uh, compensation. Yes. And they don't even have to vote on their uh, raises. It's automatic. Well, they voted to make it automatic. Yes, they did. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's so obvious, isn't it, people? You sure, people? You, I mean, there's a lot of numbskulls out there that don't see the reality of things. They have to protect those billionaires, man. Uh, meanwhile, they don't have a pot to piss in. Yeah. yeah. they got to protect those billionaires. Oh, sure. As his critics grew louder, Republican White House contender Ben Carson... Ah, the ultimate Uncle Tom. Ultimate. Re refused Monday to back off his weekend charge that Muslims shouldn't serve in the presidency. The intensifying political fallout mm. is a distraction at least as the retired neurosurgeon tries to capitalize on recent momentum in the unruly GOP field. I think Americans better go back in, in history and Remember that Japanese Americans were put in concentration camps during World War II. That's pretty severe. You know? I mean, well, remember, Mr. Ben Carson believes that it was a good thing for the slaves to come over here because it introduced them to Christianity. Oh, he knows about Christianity? Really? Oh, yes, he does. Yes, he oh. does. Yes. Oh. He doesn't know about Constitution, though. No, he, he doesn't, doesn't understand that the article uh, uh, in the Constitution which states that no religious test should ever be made for a e public office. Well, I don't even think he, he you know? Know, I don't think he knows the God of the Bible either. I don't think he knows either of the two. Well, I Any, doubt it very much. Anybody could say things, mm -hmm. make claims, you know. Kim Davis believes in he heaven for the good people. Yeah. That's nowhere in the Bible. Well, she believes what the the born again uh, evangelical kooks believe in. You know that they're all going to get, they're all going to avoid the tribulation, and uh, they're all going to be raptured up and all this yeah. stuff. And they're not going to. They're going to be living in paradise while uh, everybody else is uh, suffering during the tribulation. So yeah. Yeah. They they believe all the crap they they want to believe. But it also highlights a sentiment among voters in both parties who agree with Carson's reluctance to elect a Muslim to the nation's highest office. 
Carson's campaign reported strong fundraising mm. and more than a hundred thousand new Facebook friends in the 24 hours after he told really? NBC's Meet the Press mm -hmm. on Sunday I would not advocate that we put a Muslim in charge of this nation. He, so he got a hundred thousand, hundred thousand Facebook friends in his Facebook friends list? No, that, that's a hundred thousand since he opened his fat mouth. Oh, on top he's of... He's already had, yeah. It shows you... Whatever he's It had. shows you the mentality of yeah. modern day Americans. Yeah. Really, it shows, it shows you how pathetic Americans really are in more ways than one. His campaign manager, Barry Bennett, said on Monday, while the left wing is huffing and puffing over it, Republican primary voters are with us at least 80, 20. People in Iowa particularly are like, yeah, we're not going to vote for a Muslim. Bennett said, I don't mind the hubbub. It's not hurting us, that's for sure. The head of the nation's largest Muslim advocacy group called on Carson to drop out of the 2016 presidential contest during a Capitol Hill press conference on Monday, declaring him unfit to lead because his views are in contradiction with the United States Constitution. Not long ago, some people thought that a Catholic cannot be a president. That's true. An yeah. African American cannot be a president. There were people who were uh, concerned with uh, uh, John F. Kennedy being a Catholic, you know, and they were worried about that. All the all the racist Protestants uh, in the United States were all up in arms about Kennedy being a Catholic. They were afraid that he, he would allow the Vatican to have some He would listen to power. the Pope, yeah. who is the vicar of Christ, yeah. and therefore is inerrant, and he would have to obey him. They were afraid of that. And then later on they found out that he, uh, his Catholicism is uh, secondary or, or even farther from that, you know, from his uh, duty as president, his priorities, were, was not being a Catholic. They were wrong then, and they are wrong now. At least one Republican joined a chorus of Democrats condemning Carson's statement. South Carolina, Senator Lindsey Graham said on Sunday that the comment shows that Dr. Carson is not ready to be commander-in-chief. Yeah, people in the United States have a problem looking at the person and the content of what they say uh, rather than, um, you know, focusing on what they look like or, or their, their ethnic, racial background, religious background, you know. The leading Democratic presidential candidate, Hillary Clinton, addressed the issue on Monday on Twitter. Can a Muslim be president of the United States of America? In one word, yes. Yeah, what if... Uh, now let's move on. What if they were, they were born and raised in the United States, and they're, Ameri and they're, and they're Americanized. And they're, 30, and so they're 35. It's a big deal. They're, That's it. You know, a big deal. Their parents are Muslim, so a big deal. They're you not. Know? Well, they, they see the GOP has difficulty in differentiating between a radical Muslims, Islam, and regular Muslims. Yeah. I mean, Bernie Sanders is Jewish, but he's, you don't see him, he's not orthodox, you don't see him walking around with a yarmulke. Just the Pope. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, you, you well, know. He, he also wore his, uh, you know, the big pointed cap still. 
Yeah, yes, I mean, your um, mass. Yeah, your 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 family was was Presbyterian. That doesn't mean you are a uh, staunch Protestant Presbyterian uh, representative. I mean, it could be anybody. Anybody's background does not have does that does not mean that they are fanatically in representing them. Well, in America, actually, your backgrounds in religion. They're all phony anyway. Yeah. You know, 99% of the time. Yes. Yeah. Donald Trump says he has asked God for forgiveness. Oh. Oh, he's religious now. Well, he has to be to get that, uh, you know, multi right wing conservative base. Now he's hope. a multi billionaire uh, uh, who has an interest in the Bible. Interesting. Well, the Bible's his favorite book, but he can't. Uh, he, he knows no verses from it. No, he just knows the the, the word on the front of the book. It says, his second it says favorite Holy book, Bible. Second favorite book is the Art of the Deal. His book. But the first is the Bible. Well, see, you have to say these things to the GOP. Or they won't like you. Oh, like the GOP. And they won't vote for you. Like the GOP really knows what's inside the Bible. Well, they certainly pretend to. <laughs> In an interview segment released on Monday by the Christian Broadcasting Network. Oh, boy. And who owns that? Wasn't that Harold Camping? No. The late Harold Camping? No. Pat Robertson? Oh, yeah. Another uh, person who really knows what's inside the Bible. The billionaire reversed himself from a statement he made earlier this summer that troubled many Christian conservatives. Troubled them, huh? Do you believe that it's important to ask God for forgiveness? David Brody asked Trump. Well, I do, Trump said. I think it's great. I consider communion to be a very important thing. You know, when I go to church and I take communion, I consider that asking for forgiveness is in my own way. And I do think it's a great thing. And I think it's an important thing and it makes you feel good. I didn't think, I didn't know Donald Trump was Catholic. This is Donald Trump talking about communion? Uh, or somebody yes, else? Yes, he's talking about communion. However, the Bible makes it clear that you take communion once a year at Passover. I thought with a name like Trump, he was Protestant. Yet the Roman Catholic Church gives you communion every hour on the hour or whatever it is. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean... During a July event in Iowa, Trump had said he'd never ask God for forgiveness for his sins, a central tenet of Christian faith. Hmm. So he flip-flopped. Flip-flop. Okay. One more. Well, Hillary is, has been guilty of flip-flopping too. Yeah. Uh, 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 other Democrats but you know what flip flop John Kerry when he when he ran a long time ago flip flopped but you know what Hillary does before she flip flops she checks to see who who her donors are and then she flop she flips and flops in their direction that's correct oh, that's correct oh man I can tell you Republican mm -hmm. presidential candidate Jeb Bush oh god what an idiot. What a what a boob. Bubble-headed booby he is. Pushed back against more than a dozen protesters who repeatedly heckled him. He says that uh, black Americans, he offers black Americans hope and not free stuff. That's great. Yes, so does. free stuff, does that include a uh, 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 help with food and shelter and and you know the necessities of life survival 
Absolutely. Is that what he means by free stuff? Absolutely. Interesting. So, so hope is going to put food on your plate and a roof over your head. I didn't know that. Well, and there's more money to give to, uh, you know, the military industrial complex. He offers, he's offering the poor and black America hope. There you go. Monday, oh, he was heckled on Monday with hope without our vote. As he tried to address a national Hispanic business group. The former Florida governor was forced to halt his speech before the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in Houston to remind those shouting that he supports a pathway to citizenship for children of people in the U.S. illegally. I have this um, Miami Cuban uh, businessman on my friends list who calls uh, Pope Francis socialist, pinko kami, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, they don't like Cast Castro's uh, Cuba, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're uh, not bad. you know. But Castro's communism is not communism, it's totalitarianism. Yeah, there's a difference. They confuse, Thank you. they confuse them and, um, um, all right, continue. But like other Republican presidential hopefuls, Bush wants to secure the border with Mexico before dealing with millions of people here illegally. Is that the big wall? Uh, something of that nature. With the big beautiful door that you can come in legally. With Donald Trump's name on it. Yes, Trump wall. The Trump, instead of the Great Wall of China, it will be the Great Wall of Trump. There you go. Mary Moreno, communications director of the Texas Organizing Project, said her group wanted to call attention to the hostile atmosphere being created by the GOP field of presidential candidates. Well, your people sure keep on voting in Republican governors, don't you? Yeah. Deep yeah. in the heart of Texas? Yes, they do. So, you know, same thing here in New Jersey. Uh, uh, people were complaining constantly about Chris Christie, but they reelected him. I'm sure they, you know, Wisconsin people did the same thing, and they reelected Scott Walker. Yeah, they tried to re, tried <laughs> yeah. to recall him, but you he know. beat them back, man. <coughs> he beat them back so he can beat ISIS. Cause he beat them. They do. Uh, what they do because they can, because they're allowed to, they, they are permitted to. That's why the forces of evil have been doing what they've been doing, because we, uh, the, we the people allow know, uh, them to. Huh? You know, well, along with that, I, I don't hear anything of the voting machines in Wisconsin being checked. Oh, really? Because that's the only way Republicans can win. Well, it wasn't Especially it? in a blue state. Well, where, wasn't it proven that South Carolina? Yes. Electronic voting machines. Ohio, were, Florida. Every time somebody Canada. try, every time someone in South Carolina try to vote Democrat, it, it lit up Republican. Yeah, but you don't hear about them checking them, do you? And you don't hear a lot of uh, emphasis and a big stink by the U.S. media on that subject of cheating. So they got the gerrymander and they got the, the, the tampered with voting machine. There you go. They got the two secret weapons, both of them. So that could account cheating, for forms of cheating, actually. many GOP victories. Well, hey, a uh, 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 G.W. Bush's re-election? Over Al Gore? That sure wasn't investigated too long. You mean his selection? Selected. By the Supreme Court. Uh, predominantly uh, uh, conservative? He lost the election. Were they predominantly conservative Supreme Court justices? Of course there are. There are five of them. There you go. 
They're still there. It's rigged, man. See, this is what Americans don't realize. The system has well, been rigged. Well, they don't want to change the system. Has been rigged. I think the last, the last uh, honest United States of America was probably during Eisenhower in the 1950s. Ike. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? When I mean they, Eisenhower, Harry Truman, FDR, even going back to the other nice guy Republican, Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy! They got shit done. A lot of positive things happened. Yeah. Oh, I heard in the 1950s, union membership was at an all-time high. And the United States was very prosperous. Extremely prosperous back then. Yeah. And guess what? What? Other countries were not scared of us, even though we were the only ones with the bomb. Until the Russians got the bomb too, but guess what? That was Little easy. Korea, Vietnam—they all got. They it. weren't scared of us. But hey, today the neocons say if we get the bombs and all this other weaponry, they'll be scared of us. Yeah, even Trump is going around, right? The United States. We're gonna be the best. The last military. The last war the United States technically won was World War II, that's and that's the last time. Our freedom was threatened and our borders were threatened. It was World War II. All the other wars after that was were wars for profit, war profiteering. Because, man, the private contract is understood, man. They made a killing in World War II. But you know something? The people, the young people that joined the military, especially the ones from down south and out west, all these redneck Bible Belt teabagger people, they all believe all this patriotic crap coming from Republicans, all this flag-waving bullshit. Our freedom, where we gotta protect, defend our country. We gotta defend our country. Please, all, all this die bullshit. on the battlefield so that we don't have to take care of you when you come back here. See, okay? now, now the Please. veterans are finding out exactly how much Washington cares about them upon their return. They're yeah. finding out too severely how much they care. Poverty, homelessness. Anyway, time for our lunch. We'll be back with the second half of the show. Uh, you will be joined now by How to Defeat a Conservative, How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses. Just simply hit the pause button, read and learn, followed by our voiceover artists. William Hamilton Morrow the third with promo. Okay. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.
Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we are back. We are back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for doing promo and your words of wisdom. And we will now go back to the readings of uh, this week's show. Um, no holidays coming up this Monday, right? Okay, so it won't be a holiday show, but it will be in honor of Pope Francis in, in his first visit to the United States. And of course, go Bernie Sanders, as always, for 2016. Go Bernie, go Bernie. It would be great if they met Bernie Sanders and Pope Francis. Um, what was I talking about before? Oh, the ev evangelicals. Um, oh, right to lifers. Mm -hmm. Listen, right to life evangelical cultists. A fertilized egg conception is no different than me taking a half a dozen fertilized chicken eggs, scrambling them, putting a, a Swiss cheese and bacon, and making myself an omelet. No difference. It is not a human baby, you stupid imbeciles. Neither is an embryo a human baby, you stupid ignoramus imbeciles. You all should just uh, keep an eye out for the next big meteor shower and just simply uh, lie down in front of it. So, so the meteors will put you out of your misery because as in the words of uh, uh, my friend Mario Petrus, you all are a waste of sperm. Yeah. Continue. Bridget Harrison's column precisely explains the transition of our governor, Chris Christie, oh. in these last two years. The man that you really can't debate or disagree with because then he gets ornery. The dictator Christie. My wife and I moved to northern New Jersey in August of 2013. We had heard how popular and engaging Governor Christie was. Popular. Well, New Jersey is not sh short of assholes, that's for sure. But, since we came, we have become disillusioned with the governor. His bully tactics and pandering to his friends and appointees are most disappointing. Oh yeah, giving away millions of, of New Jersey tax money to his rich crony friends. How on earth could anybody have voted for him a second time? It's mind-boggling. His refusal to pay for the special costs for his security detail during his presidential run while allowing our state to further decline is inexcusable. Well, the taxpayers also foot the bill for his uh, Bridgegate uh, uh, legal representation, his lawyers. The governor should stay at home and run the state. To the ground, but run the state. Nah. Even though he claims New Jersey has vastly improved from... Um, from... Um, Governor, um, what the fuck was his name again? The last governor who used to work for Goldman Sachs. The de the Democratic billionaire. Yeah, we know. It's at I the know. tip of my tongue. I oh. know. <laughs> yeah. The Capitol Police huh. are investigating a man identifying himself as an oath Keeper, who has threatened 
to arrest Senator Debbie Stabenow of Michigan for treason because of her support for the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah, but isn't, aren't all progressives, including Obama, for the deal? Democrats Not in general? every one of them, but Democrats? enough to override, you know, the Republicans stopping it. How is it treasonous if, 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 uh, if uh, most Democrats are for the deal? Well, how is it treasonous? How was it not treasonous for Dick Cheney and uh, George W. Bush and his neocon friends to invade Iraq? Oh, they're guilty of so many things. That's correct, but the Republicans don't see that. Perception, so we're talking about perception. Yeah. Hypocrisy, perception. John Ritzheimer. The Arizona resident who reportedly attracted FBI attention when he organized an anti-Muslim protest rally Lovely. <clears throat> and draw Mohammed cartoon contest at a Phoenix mosque shared his plans with fellow US Marines in an open letter posted online. We have chosen her as our first target, due to our strong ties with the militia, mili Michigan State Militia and their lax gun laws that will allow us to operate in a manner necessary for our operation. Yeah, not all militias are meant to do good. <laughs> so it depends on their, the people in them. After successfully detaining the Michigan Democrat, he and his armed militia mm -hmm. will continue to move across the country <clears throat> and arrest everyone involved with the Iran nuke deal. Oh, they're authorized to do this? Including the president. Now, dream on. My question is, <laughs> why is the man not in jail? Yeah, remember the days when people who threatened the president would immediately have the FBI knocking on on their door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember those days? Yeah. You don't see that anymore. Not when the man is black. Right, and, and, and the Republicans control the Congress. <laughs> and, and, and the Supreme Court. <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, the Democratic Supreme Court justices are outnumbered. Or I, don't, I don't know what the ratio is now. For what? Supreme Court justices. Ratio of... Uh, five Demi to four. Five to four in favor. Five conservatives and four whatever you want to yeah, call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a Bader Ginsburg, Sotomayor... Uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, Clagan, Kagan, whatever her name is. Yeah. The chubby one. Yeah. And the other guy. Stephen, or whatever. Oh, okay. Ben Carson. Ben Carson again. You know, there's no good caricature of Ben Carson because he, he's, he's, a, he's a relatively good looking man. There's nothing, there's no derogatory caricature of Ben Carson. Very simple, Uncle Tom. Yeah, well, that's, that's obvious. Right. I mean a character. Yes, I'm hey, asshole, yes, sir. yes. No, okay. Kim Davis has no uh, a hideous, funny-looking caricature either. And she's a character. Um, why not? The, 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 the um, uh, John Boehner. Bill, Bill Murray on uh, Saturday Night Live, the Coneheads. She is a, a She's a conehead. She is a We're from France. She is a political satire cartoonist dream, Kim Davis. Holy mackerel, but I, I, I keep on looking and looking and I can't find a real degrading caricature of Kim Davis. It's but it's it's easy. Huge forehead like a billboard. Just make make it really big. 
and you know, no neck, you know, give her a fat little body, you know, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody is arrested anymore for threatening the black man in the White House. Sad disrespect that he's getting. Anyway, Ben Carson believes a Muslim should not be elected president. Okay. Because the religion of Islam is incompatible with the U.S. Constitution. Well, so so is the Republican Party incompatible with the U.S. Constitution, isn't it? In Carson's book, One Nation, What We Can All Do to Save America's Future, <clears throat> he quotes the Old Testament in saying, if a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man is with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must be put to death. I mean, if, if two men are bus slamming each other, packing fudge, gerbilizing the old Hershey Highway, taking the Hershey Highway. Yeah. Well, they really should take the, a big dump before they. They usually do an anima. Come on. Before they engage in such a thing. But, however, up the ass is like the third or whatever uh, of the acts that they choose to yeah, it's, indulge in. It's, um, it's not the first. It's, um, it's a, a, a prostate simulation. Prostatic. It is a prostatic stimulation. That's about it. The first act that they usually indulge in is fellatio. Okay. okay. Mr. Philip Lacio. Philip Lacio. And he quotes the New Testament. And don't forget the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, which were filled with sexual immorality and every kind of sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and a warning of the eternal fire of God's judgment. Who wants to hear all this coming from the White House? Pope Francis has a different attitude. He has said, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has good will, who am I to judge? As of now, Carson is only second to Donald Trump in popularity in some presidential polls, in my opinion. So Carson is ahead of fearing? Carson is not suitable to be president of the United States. No, just neurosurgery. So, so well, that... you know, I'm beginning to question his greatness as a neurosurgeon, which he keeps talking about. Yeah, why why uh, choose a political career of this magnitude if you are a supposed superior superior and f and and famous neurosurgeon? Yeah, I separated Siamese twins. Why would you take such a huge step down in income from what a surgeon makes? down to what the President of the United States gets paid. Why would you take that big pay cut, plus all the aggravation and responsibility and uh, of, of being a President, and the pay cut, why would you take a step down if you are such a renowned neurosurgeon? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Questions, questions, questions. You have to, um, uh, uh, look at you have to analyze things people you have to study them you have to uh, weigh out the pros and cons look for red flags you have to really analyze something you know it's like um, it's like see I'm very analytical and deep Reverend Bill is very analytical and deep uh, William Morrow is also uh, 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 <coughs> attention to detail studying things like for instance I'm very good at reading labels. The both of us are. I had um, a call came in, 
and this guy asked me, um, I have you on some kind of a holistic health list of people who take supplements. I'm thinking to myself, how the hell does he know that? Then he asked me if I took uh, turmeric. I said, as a matter of fact, I just started taking turmeric. And as soon as I started telling him what I take, <laughs> which is a very good quality uh, standardized extract capsule of turmeric. Very, I am very impressed with the ingredients. It is under the Spring Valley label of Walmart. It is a Walmart brand. Uh, they use the name Spring Valley. I'm very impressed. I read it. The price was low and it's bona fide, high quality, standardized extract of turmeric with curcumin. As soon as I started talking about what I'm taking, he he rudely kept on cutting me off. He wouldn't let me talk, so I hung up on him. Oh, Mo, our turmeric is far superior yeah, to that junk over there. He wanted to sell his. He, he just wanted me to part with my money. And But he was obnoxious about it. He kept on cutting me off. I just, I didn't raise my voice. I just went click. I pressed the button. That's it, gone. You know, if you're going to be rude, but... You see the sleaze of American business? It's like now they don't they don't even treat you with respect as a potential customer. It's done very obnoxiously. Speaking of obnoxious. Speaking of obnoxious. Carly Fiorina <coughs> said on Sunday Horse Face Fiorina that neither she nor Hewlett Packard should be faulted for the sales of millions of HP printers in Iran when such business was prohibited by U.S. law. I'm not sure she was. she's going to say that because she doesn't want uh, a scandal. Appearing on Fox News Sunday, Fiorina said that despite being the CEO of HP, when the Iranian sales took place via a third party, she was unaware of them. She's unaware and she don't recall. What did Mr. Reagan say? I don't recall. Well, he went, well, I don't recall. I don't recall us selling uh, weapons to Iran. I don't recall. But they say we did, so I guess we did. Just like um, uh, 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 Bush, Bush Sr. says, uh, read my lips, no new taxes, thousand points of light, thousand points of light. No new taxes. First, HP, you need to remember, was larger than each of the 50 states. I'm the arena set. I'm surprised they hired her such a, a, a famous big company in the industry. It's a larger budget, budget than any one of our 50 states and a global enterprise. And so it's impossible to ensure that nothing wrong ever happens. <laughs> the question is, what do you do when you find out? Are you saying you didn't know about it? Host Chris Wallace said. That's a good question. What do you do when you find out? In fact, the Securities and Exchange Commission investigation proved that neither I nor anyone else in management knew about it. And who knew? The lowly salesman, I presume. Nobody in management knew? Yeah, yeah. I find that hard to believe. That's why nobody ever goes to jail in management. Because of those lowly people who do these things. Those bad, bad, lowly people. They're always doing things like that. People at the bottom of the totem pole are always are always uh, the ones that are authorized to do underhanded things in a company. Oh, upper management never knows anything. When the company discovered this three years after I left, they cut off all ties. The yeah. Securities and Exchange Commission investigated very thoroughly and concluded that no one in management was aware. 
A 2008 Boston Globe investigation found that while U.S. companies were banned from selling goods to Iran, an Indian company in Dubai yeah. called Reddington Gulf had sold HP printers there. Huh. Interesting. They sold them so well, in fact, that HP had 41% market share in Iran by 2007. Wow. Reddington Gulf obtained the printers through a European subsidiary. He went around the block and, 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 and up the street and, and, and down the alley. And so you couldn't track it. You see, our show this week is hard hitting. I think it is. When Wallace asked Fiorina why HP had given Reddington Gulf its Wholesaler of the Year Award in 2003, if the company was not aware of its sales to Iran, Fiorina again deflected the blame. <laughs> the Wholesaler of the Year that you're describing was doing business with another company that was doing business with Iran. Clearly that Wholesaler of the Year, which should not have been Wholesaler of the Year, was not honest in their dealings with us. And they were not honest in their dealings with this third party company. Fiorina was also asked about the HP's struggles during her tenure which included layoffs of 30,000 employees and a drop in the share price. She said that her time at HP from 1999 until early 2005 was a period marked by widespread faltering in the technology industry. Mm -hmm. It's important to remember that I led HP during the worst tech Technology recession in 25 years. She added that the NASDAQ technology stock index dropped by 80% and took 15 years to recover from that recession. So she's Lily White. She's innocent. She's innocent um, of everything. What, about, what does the evidence show? She got a clean slate, man! The evidence still shows... She's a crook! She's a crook. Well, her ex-husband said she was a clown, right? And a robot. I wonder what the robot was all about. The floundering Fiorina fiasco. Certainly not a robot like those androids of the future will be. The horse fit. What, the sex, uh... Sex, con uh the yes, con yes, a concubine? Yes, yes. Yes. Well, they don't complain. You don't have to entertain them. They they don't, you know, you don't have to really, you don't have to take them out for dinner and drinks. You don't have to remember your anniversary. And all yeah. that stuff. Unless they use it as a password. Then you're stuck. You know, um... Oh, gosh. You know, we're just a, a, a blend of so much here at Progressive Discussions. In the absence of coral on Florida's ailing reefs, a titan of the sea is taking over giant barrel sponges. There, there used to be a, a sponge diving industry off the Florida Keys many years ago. A lot of Greek immigrants were sponge divers from the old country. And they, could they use these sponges? Big as a bathtub. That big, huh? The redwoods of the reef can live for centuries. Really? And grow to be six feet in diameter. And, and they're and they're they're flourishing because of the decline in coral. 
for a healthy reef. A single sponge can provide plentiful housing and dependable sanitation. With a menagerie of marine life finding food and shelter inside a cavernous barrel. That's good. That also filters huge volumes of seawater. That's outstanding. That's outstanding. Do they, um, would they live in the Pacific Ocean or are they just indigenous to the Caribbean? I wonder. But after a widespread coral die-off in the 1970s, 80s, a significant increase in sponges threatens to collapse the foundation of the complex ecosystem a new study has found. Wow. The research, published in the Journal of Experimental Marine Biology, and ecology in August <clears throat> found that in 12 years sponges off Co Conch Key and no Conch Key, I've been there increased by 122 percent Wow! taking up 39 percent more reef the best, in, yeah, I'm sorry but. in some areas the number of Baby sponges increased by six hundred percent. The best, the best thing you can do for the for the ocean, the seas, is not to pollute, and they will come back. They will take care of themselves. <clears throat> if they are all that there is, the reefs will flatten out and decay. Yeah. Now the Pacific Ocean with Fukushima is another talk show. As long as they are holding the space. They can live hundreds of years. Wow. They won't give that space up to the coral. Not with that lifespan. The redwoods of the sea. I didn't even know these sponges existed. This is the first time I'm learning about it. How wow. about that? While wow. researchers only documented the rise in the Florida Keys, Pollock said he has seen the spread all over the Caribbean. Pollock. It's the name of a type of codfish. <laughs> Pollock. It's P A W L I K, not P O L L O C K. Thank you. Something crawled. It's up. spreading from Belize to Tobago. Wow. That far? Because Belize is Central America. Tobago yeah. is the. Uh, eastern end of the Caribbean. Caribbean. It's by Trinidad. That's correct. And uh, Guiana, Venezuela, well, maybe more Guiana. We think the exact same thing is happening everywhere in the Caribbean. I remember the uh, the infamous uh, red tide. Was the algae bloom? High bacterial algae bloom that caused problems in the Caribbean? Well, that's bad news, Pollock said. There is an upside. The sponges suck in huge amounts of water, filtering out carbon, sending it back into the sediment. In an increasingly carbon-rich atmosphere, that's a good thing. They provide a place for baby fish. Fry, yeah. And shrimp. Well, and the, baby lobsters. You might as well say the food chain, the uh, the cycle. All of the, the things. The bottom of the food chain. Important yeah. for fishermen. Well, because uh, where you have a haven for a baby everything, you have uh, the predators and the bigger fish and, you know, every, everything hangs out in that area. In the 1990s. Because of food. Pollock said researchers at the Aquarius Underwater Research Station south of Isla Morada Isla Morada means purple island Spanish. began noticing I like Isla Morada a lot the I sponges bit. turning white oh what's going on man? 
about the sponge? Some completely fell apart. Why? Why are the sponges dying? So in 2000, Pollock started monitoring the sponges, mapping out 12 uh, to 16 acre plots. Over time, the sponges had begun crowding out the seaweed, which had spread after bleaching wiped out some 90% of the reef tract. Taken over. It's not good. You have to have balance in nature. So that was a good thing? But between 2006 and 2012, the number of sponges began to rise, likely because of the absence of hurricanes, which can easily topple the big sponges even at 30 feet deep where they live. If acidity in oceans continue to rise under climate change, coral with their vulnerable limestone skeleton will likely die. Yeah, no wonder I, used to see, no wonder I see so many limestone boulders um, in the Florida Keys. A lot of limestone there. The sponges with a glass skeleton so far appear unaffected by increasing acidity. It's better than what we had, which is seaweed. But coral is better than sponge. Glass, a glass skeleton, isn't it silica? Because sand? Yes. I mean, true, I'm not talking about the white sand in... in Ipanema. Here. Well, the white sand you see in um, tourist photos of uh, South Pacific or the Caribbean, that, that th those are actually uh, tiny, dead marine creatures. I'm talking about regular sand is is a is a silica yeah silica so when they say glass skeleton they mean silica do you happen to have one of those uh i don't want to say light subjects because it I might have it might no upset idea. the hard-hitting people but i mean like one of those uh human interest story subjects i don't know if I not we'll just call it, it a, a week it's still a matter of things being out of whack out of whack. Yeah, out of whack. Man. Yeah, well, let this be the last one. Well, no, I want to look for something that's a little lighter. Well, I mean, you know what I mean by... I know what you mean, buddy boy. Human interest. And I found one. Human interest. I found one. So we could pound on human behavior. I found one. Psychological uh, issues. Ooh. I get to apply my Blackthorn Shillelagh therapy. On right. somebody. Right. Look at this crap. How did this happen? Something's going on, brother. Straighten that thing out. Something's in. going on here. This side won't get yeah, new office carpet. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, but why did it get moved like that? No. Spirits. I didn't do, spirits. I didn't do nothing. Spirits. Evil spirits trying to sabotage the power that is progressive. I am discovery. 19 years old. Progressive. Oh, you're 19? And going into my second year of college. You look old for 19. I was sexually and emotionally abused during my first two years of high school by a boy. Oh, it's a female. Okay. A year older than me. Um, okay. I attended therapy for a while and eventually found myself in a loving relationship with my boyfriend. We'd been living together for a year. Everything was going fine until I came home for summer break. I have never gotten over the feelings I had for my abuser. Ah, see, you see, the bad boys, they're attracted to the bad boys, these girls. Eh, eh. But I loved my boyfriend. Yeah, sure and would never want to hurt him or endanger myself again. She wants the abusive soprasada, the abusive salami. Why should I have feelings for someone who treated me so terribly? 
she's, what should I do about that? She's just one of tens of thousands of yeah, um, mostly young females that are this way. Dear Abby says, <laughs> I commend you for recognizing that the status quo isn't in your best interest. Yeah, she does acknowledge that, yeah. Old habits die hard. Yeah. And you may still be physically attracted to your abuser. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe it's uh, physical lust for now him. Now that the school year is beginning again, head straight to the student health center and talk to a counselor about this. Understanding this is important for your emotional well-being now and in the future. You think uh, girls like this um, take it personally that they were abused by someone? Like, uh, like it's partially their Sometimes fault? Sometimes it is the first thrust of sexuality that occurs under those circumstances and they like it. First thrust, you mean first time you mean that she was a virgin before him I'm not talking about busting a hymen I'm talking about the feelings oh feelings we like that that nause nauseating, like that nauseating song feelings nothing more than feelings oh I hated that song I feel <coughs> <coughs> feelings fit the way she says it feelings I'm talking about the thrust man the pie the salami thrust you're talking about feelings. Feelings, man. In other words, the first time she felt in love. Is that I what she's trying to say? about in love. It's the sexual feelings. Well, then we're going that back to hide the salami. That's what I'm talking about. Well, no, hiding the salami well, is feeling, not... feelings, feelings. Hey, hey, hey. Hiding the salami is not the only thing that brings about a reaction, a response. Well, that's what well, you're talking. You ta could do. You could let your finger I'm do the walking. I'm talking about the f same thing. I'm talking about the physical part. Then you yes. say no. It's feelings. And yeah. then I hear I'm thinking it was emotion. And what you really meant is what I said initially. Emotions the physical are feelings. Part. What? Emotions are feelings. Yes. They're not physical. Like uh, right. Well, what do you what do you mean? Her first thrust. When you said thrust, I thought about intercourse. Thrust. Oh, that was your that was your first wrong thing. No, it's not because the word thrust is associated with playing hide the salami. Ninety-nine percent of men, yeah, in discussing sexuality, thrust, babe, thrust. They think of only one thing: thrust, intercourse, thrusting, yeah, and shooting their load. But that's not how it is. Empty, empty in their flapjacks. That's not how it is. Flapjacks. Hold on, hold on. Seven bells for emptying your flapjacks. Oh my that's, God. What do you mean that's not how it is? How is it? You tell me. Well, forgive, but let's just take your example I mean, for a moment. Realistically. Putting in the salami. Hide the salami. Well, what yes. occurs before that? Usually foreplay. Feelings? No, uh, usually kissing and, and, and hugging. What they, and what do they arouse? And uh, 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 they arouse a, uh, a sexual stimuli. Which are? Getting horny. Feelings! Uh, sensation. Feelings! I, 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 I could, no, no, I call them sensation. Well, you can call it feeling. No, you couldn't uh, call them. They are. All right, so the, so, so the love part would be emotional. We'll well, call we're not them even emotion. talking about love. How could feelings? We're talking about sexual How could feelings getting be getting plowed and being in love all at the same time? You got to differentiate the two. What? We're not even talking about love. We're talking about the first sexual stimulation. Stimulation. That, right. While a man, a man, a boy, was abusing her. Uh, did she say abuse? How do we know it was true abuse? Maybe we she's don't. exaggerating. That's why she's probably still liking it. Feelings, feelings. Because it aroused these feelings. I didn't think uh, women that young had much of a sex drive until they got went into their thirties. Until they, until they entered their thirties, I thought their sex drive was like 
you know, uh, minimal. Well, what does the sacred drive have to do with, with one occurrence? Okay, it's Please. between her and this ex that she, that she claims is an abuser. Yeah, she didn't describe what abuse it was. And she cannot, she is still physically attracted to him, but she does acknowledge. Maybe not to him, but what he did. This well, is what how, I'm saying. Well, well, then how come she she's not attracted to her uh, uh, the, the present boyfriend that did does the same thing to her? Uh, uh, he does, obviously, he does not. So it's not the physical part is what he did. So maybe he she has some kind of an S and M turn on. It could be. We don't know. With this, uh, there was not enough descriptive stuff here. She did not explain the fine detail of yes. what the abuse meant. Yeah. How she was abused. She might abused. be a a a a uh, uh, what do we call it? A uh, uh, oh my God, submissive. A submissive. You see, this no. this so-called last light. Uh, topic is not so light anymore. No. Hold on, where's my shillelagh? It's heavy duty, man. You see, you pencil neck geek out there that said we're not hard hitting. Sometimes we are hard hitting. You jerk. Go ahead, continue. Continue. That's what it. Is Dear Abby said. All right, that's it. Hi, she said it. Hi, you. Go oh. get counseling. Go get counseling. All right. Now, thank you very much. For this week's progressive discussions, we will see you next week. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend and the new week. Um, yes, it is officially not summer anymore, but with climate change, that doesn't mean anything. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Bye bye. Say so long to these people. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.